Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So for today's project I thought we'd have a little bit of fun and make ourselves some little fairy cups and saucers from a very easy petal cane which I've used both for making the petals to go in the cup and also different colour to go in the saucers. And they have a little recess in the saucer so it sits nicely inside. Obviously you can make them in whatever colour and whatever design you like, but in this tutorial I'll just show you how to make them um, using a few couple of forms that we make ourselves as well. It's a nice simple one to do, a very simple cane and quick and easy to make. But they make a lovely addition to a fairy house, a doll's house or anything along those lines. All the information you need regarding equipment, the sizes, the clay I'm using, the colours, everything like that is all detailed in the information below the video. So just sit back, relax and watch as I show you how I made some fairy cups and saucers. To start the process I'm going to make myself some little moulds. So just make life easier for me and I'm using the two part moulding compound often comes either in blue and white or sort of green and white and this is the sort that can actually be baked in the oven so check that's the right sort that you are using. If you don't have any of this you can make moulds from scrap polymer clay instead and then you'd add a little bit of cornstarch or corn flour or releasing agent around the mould before we put the petals on to make our cups. But I'm using this because I'm also going to use it to make a mould for some leaves and one other thing and I'll show you that in a moment. So I have taken four grams of each of the two colours and then you just mix them together to create a new complete colour. Having got it nicely mixed, um, you've got a few minutes to work with it so I'm going to put it into two pieces and I have taken two similarly sized leaves, this is just from an indoor hibiscus plant that I've got and I'm going to push this nice and flat, this is just a piece of um, baking parchment, just anything would work, you can just do it on your tile if you want to, but I know I need to use my tile, so I've just used that instead, just somewhere for it to sit for a few minutes, and I've pressed those nice and flat, and hopefully big enough that I can put one leaf in one direction facing down, and the other one the other way up, so that one was face down, this one's that way up. And then you'll get both sides of the leaf for when we want to put our texture on our little petals. I'm going to press that firmly in and then quickly cut away any excess. Just make sure those are nicely pressed down, still are nice and flat. And I have made myself a little template here. This is on squared paper and these squares are half a centimetre each. So what I've done is on this I've drawn myself a little cup template which is half a centimetre by one and a half centimetres at the top and just drawn it that shape. I've drawn myself a little circle which is actually one and a half centimetres wide and drawn a hexagon shape on it so I know I'm going to add my six pieces so that will actually give me a good 60 degree angle for all of these and I have just drawn myself a little line to give me a rough idea of the length that I want the handles to be. So all of that's for when we do the cane later and you don't need to do this, you can do it completely by eye and do it freehand if you want to but I know some of you like specific information on sizes and shapes so this is purely for those of you who want that specific information. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a little template, a little sort of mould in the shape of a cup um, so that we can put the petals on. So I'm going to pull myself off a small amount of the moulding compound and just rolling it flat on my tile, I'm just tapering one end. And I'm going to press flat and then I'm going to see how that sort of looks in relation to my little template of my cup. It doesn't matter whether it goes longer or taller, you're only looking at that sort of bottom. And what I've done is I've just literally snapped some cocktail sticks in half so they've got a nice rough edge and I'm going to push that into the mould and then pull the moulding compound back up it slightly and then I'm going to spend a little bit of time seeing if I can get those nicely shaped corners so it's going to fit on my template and then when it's the right shape just very gently create a flat bottom. Now if you let these set upright 
what tends to happen is the weight of the cocktail stick will pull them over so you should just be able to leave them resting on their side and so you should have enough to do that for six and then the last thing I'm going to do and this is something I have prepared earlier I got myself a thin sheet of polymer clay I put that through on setting number seven now on my machine naught is thick and nine is thin and I'll put all the settings of my pasta machine in relation to playing card thickness in the details below this video I simply used one of the little cutters which was a half um, centimeter cutter cut out holes and then baked the piece of clay with six cut out holes because now with the little bits of the leftover molding compound I can use tiny little bits just to press in and to take away the excess and I just want tiny little rounds now if you don't have this and if you don't have um, you don't want to do this you can instead very very simply just mark out on a piece of card go around your cutter or just mark yourself the cutters and cut out pieces of card instead this is a slightly better method of doing it but if you haven't got any of this molding compound then use a piece of card instead and as you can see it's just ordinary white card stock and just cut those out in circles but it works slightly better if you do have the molding compound so you'll end up with a leaf if you want to do that the moulds for the um, cups if you want to do that and either cut out pieces of cards or little inset bits in the moulding compound and do that to say for however many cups you want to make in any one go. The polymer clay I'm using today is Fimo Soft but all well known and recognised brands of clay will work equally well for what we're doing today. I'm using very small amounts because obviously we're making small things and the amounts I'm using will probably make you Oh, I don't know, probably about sort of 20 cups um, and saucers. So it's up to you as to whether or not you want to use this amount or even smaller. Um, what I've done is I've got three and a half grams or an eighth of an ounce of white and lemon yellow. And that's, we're going to use that for the petal. And then half that amount of the orange or the tangerine as it's called in Fimo Soft. And then to do the underneath of the saucer, I'm going to do a contrasting colour, but we do exactly the same for both of these. And for this one, I've got white apple green and tropical green and again the same amounts the 3.5 grams or an eighth of an ounce of those two and half as much of the green and we just need a little bit of extra white just to do the bottoms of the cups and the sauces so I've got a small amount sort of about 1.75 grams or sort of a sixteenth of an ounce of white and I've put that through on a thin setting so setting number seven of my pasta machine whereas these have all been conditioned and put through on setting number three if you're unsure about conditioning clay or why we do it then I do have a video tutorial on that and I'll put a link to how you can get through to that and look at that on the details below this video. We'll start with the petals so I'm getting my white, my lemon yellow and my tangerine. As you can see I've put them in exceedingly rough um, rectangular shapes more like ovals than rectangulars um, but it really doesn't matter when we're doing this and I'm going to go diagonally across the end to straight down the middle one and we just put them together roughly like this because I only want a small amount of the um, tangerine to show so I'm just going to sort of add it on not even going to press it round much and you can sort of shove it round and make it into sort of more a rectangle so you can see it's mainly going to be the white going through to the, le the lemon yellow with just a little bit of the tangerine on the outside I'm going to fold that in half and I'm going to make sure when I fold it that I've got some of the white showing through on this side still so I don't want it to go completely to a pale yellow I would like a little bit of the white still showing through fold it in half pinched across the bottom and I'll put it back through the pasta machine that way through always with a fold at the bottom and then constantly fold bottom to top until we end up after several goes through the pasta machine of having a nice blend from one side to the other this is called a Skinner blend. If you're unsure about Skinner blends, then again, I have a video with a few tips and techniques and I'll put a link to that in the details below this one. You can also do this process by hand. If you don't have a pasta machine, you can create exactly the same effect and you would simply lay the clay between stacked layers of playing cards. And again, I'll put the details as to how many cards you would need for setting number two in the details below this. Roll it, 
fold, roll and fold until you again get the nice gradient from one side through to the other. So I'm going to put this through on setting number two of my pasta machine because we've now got four layers of clay and I'll bring you back when we've got that nice graduation from the white through to the tangerine. So we've got our nice blend, as you can see the tangerine darker colour stayed mainly to the top and I've still got some of the white left. We only want a very narrow piece for what we're doing at the moment, so I'm going to fold that in two, press nicely down the fold, and then I'll put it back through the same setting that way in to give myself a longer, thinner strip. So again on setting number two. And now I'm going to go down to my thinnest usable setting on my pasta machine. And again, put through the darker end first. We get as long and thin a strip as we can. If you know that your machine shreds or tears your clay, then go down one setting at a time until you get to your longest, thinnest strip. And if you're doing it between two playing cards, then go down gradually and gradually reduce the amount of playing cards you've got down the side. Having got our strip of clay, all we're going to do is we're just going to concertina it probably about half an inch, just over a centimetre wide from one end down to the other, making sure you're not trapping any air in the folds as you go. So you can see we end up with a little oblong of clay and as you saw I pressed it down flat on the surfaces to make sure that the ends were nice and flat and all we're going to do is we are going to press with our fingers and pull that darker orange over the sides. Do it down both sides, sit it on the bottom and press in the white to make it more triangular in shape. Repeat again really pressing that orange up and round the sides. And what we're actually looking for, and what normally happens, is that one side, it goes down more on one side than the other. You can see there, it's actually doing the same for me. So one side, it's gone down quite a lot, and the other's really quite patchy. So I'm going to press it slightly triangular again, and then we're going to chop this in half. You put the two sides together where it's less down the side and the two sides where it's longest down the side like that and then when we press that together to create more of a diamond form and I'm doing that by putting my fingers together like that you can see we've got that nice sort of little area of dark that goes down the middle so all I've got to do now is either up in the air or down on the tile whichever you find most easy we are going to press in along the side and reduce this down. And even though we haven't got a lot of clay here and there's not a lot of length, when it gets to about just under three inches, about sort of six, seven centimetres, I will chop it in half, put one piece on one side for later and then just reduce one piece down. And I'm looking to get this to the shape and size that it's no higher than our little template here on the mug and do it so that it sits nicely inside this sort of 60 degree angle which will make sense in a moment. So all I'm doing at the moment still is just pressing it down along the sides. I'm going to press in down the sides to round off the edges and then just roll it gently along the bottom just to round off the bottom end. At this stage it's easier to um, cut through a slice. Hold the slice up to the cup template, so we're a little bit taller at the moment. And I'm going to press it down in there and we're actually not too far off the degree of angle we want. So I'm just going to reduce it, press in ever so slightly make it slightly longer towards the white end. Take another little slice off just to check. And I'm quite happy that that's the right size for what we want. The next thing to do is to take six slices of this and I'm going to take relatively thin slices but the important thing is to make them as consistent as you can rather than thick or thin. I'm 
By this stage, our leaf moulds should have worked. You can pull the leaves off and then you've got that nice formation of a leaf. So take your little pieces, put them towards the top, and then you can press between the leaves. This will give them a little bit of definition, but also just take off the cut sides to make them slightly more realistic. Repeat for all six pieces. The moulds you made on your cocktail stick should also be ready. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to set three petals to start with and try and space them equidistant around the outside and do it so the bottom bits just overlap onto the bottom ever so slightly. Because this is a non-stick moulding compound, it can be a little bit fiddly to put the first three on. So just hold them roughly in place with your hands so you can see that they're spaced okay. So in actual fact that one can come slightly further round. And once you start to put the other ones on, then they will all stick in place. And I'm just paying a little bit of attention, trying to make sure that I've got them fairly evenly spaced around the top. If you've got excess to work in on the bottom, do. Or you can just take something like the cable needle and there very gently just roll the edges. You want to make sure there's no gaps around the side because it needs to be able to hold water if it's going to be a proper little fairy cup. And very gently just roll over until all the gaps join. On something like the baking sheet, again, I will just press down to make sure I've got a nice flat bottom to the cup. And then to add a little extra something, that extra piece of white clay that we put through on that thin setting, I'm going to use my little cutter and just add a tiny little bit on the bottom, which is like the bottom of our cup. And again, make sure it's nice and central and press down to make sure that your cup's going to stand nicely upright when it's finished. At this stage, I will generally just pull out the very tops of the petals just a little bit to make it more even, so that if your cups, if some of the petals are stretching out more than the others, you can just pull them up so that the top of the cup is going to be more even around the outside. And then we just need to add the handle and the handle I do by taking the cut off piece that we took from our cane when we we're doing the measurements, cut a thin slice of that. You can usually get four or five out of one slice and I'm just going to roll it between my fingers and I'm going to roll it till it's the length I've marked on my little template here. Now I've worked out that for what I'm doing today, I actually need the four squares, so about two centimetres, um, rather than the five, which is an inch. But get it so it's nicely rolled out. And then picking it up, I'm going to put it dark end, going away from the cup, decide which bit I think the handle needs to go on, so I'm going to put it on there. And I'm starting it so that the orange goes down there, and then you just simply curl this up and around and attach it to the bottom of the cup. And that is your handle. So there's your little cup ready to bake. And because you've got it on the cocktail stick, you can take some scrap polymer clay, push it down onto your work surface and you can get several cups in the same one. Make the hole with a cocktail stick and then that will just sit in to bake and I'll put that flat on the tile to bake. If you don't have any scrap clay to do this, you can stack yourself some nice thick corrugated card. Same thing, create some holes with a cocktail stick and again, stick it in to bake. And they just sit like that when they are baking. Make as many as you need for your set. 
put them all together and when I bake I will tent the whole tile completely in aluminium foil just to protect the clay should the oven spike in temperature whilst it is baking but I make sure that the foil isn't touching the top of the cups and if you've got something like a large bowl that will actually fit inside the oven as well and is taller than your pieces then rather than using aluminium foil you can always sit that over the top instead which is what I often do with pieces like this and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. So I will get six of those done and whilst they're baking we will move on and make the little saucers. Making the saucers is exactly the same process as making the petals so I'm going to use the white, the apple green and the tropical green, put them into a Skinner blend, reduce them down and do exactly the same all the way through till we get something about this size. So I will bring you back when I've done all of that and got it down to this size. The green one is now done and say so reduced down exactly the same way and I've done it so that it will fit inside one of those little segments but isn't much wider than the um, diameter of that or the radius of that circle. Again take six slices. I've cut an acetate sheet and put it on top of my piece of paper so I can work on top of this and all I'm going to do is to set my six pieces on. And then again with the cable needle I'm just rolling towards the centre to make sure I've got a nice even flat saucer. So look at the outside shape, make sure that one bit's not going out more than another. And because this is a flower or a floral thing with leaves and petals, again we don't need to be too neat. What we are going to do now though is to make that little area where the cup will sit in. So either with the piece of card that we cut out or with the little template we made from the moulding compound we're going to put that and press it into the middle of our piece. Interesting enough this is pretty close to the size you get from a, a hole punch so if you've got a nice clear clean crisp hole punch that takes nice cutouts you could do that instead of having to cut them by hand. So I'll show you with this one. So all you do is you press it down and then you're going to press it in because you want to press this in so it's virtually flat with the clay and if it was the card so let me just ping that out so you can see there it's created that hollow if it was the card you'd do exactly the same and you press it in creating a nice place where the clay will sit in. So I'm just going to ping that one out because I did it with that one. So one last thing because we haven't got any texture on here I'm just going to with a cocktail stick just draw little vein lines in each of the leaves. We can use various forms to create our mould. This is the hollow bead maker from Sculpey. This is the cut off bottom of a used drinks can and I have carefully masked with tape around the cut area so you're not going to cut yourself and you'd use the domed top of these. You can use measuring spoons if you're nice round domed ones. And there are various other things you can use and again I'll put the details of all of those in the description below the video. I'm going to use the spoons just because it's easy and less big for what we're doing today in the filming of this but these work really well and in actual fact you could use one, two, three, four, five, six because they're not too different in the amount of doming you've got so you could use those um, and do all six of your cups if you wanted to do just by using the one form there otherwise you'd either have to have six of these or six of these or keep using the same one obviously over and over again. Remove from the template and then with your little either paper or blue bit still in place press carefully and centrally down on whatever mould you're planning on using and again I'm just going to do the little marks just to get a little bit of extra texture and put some little veins in the leaf and the very last thing to do using a larger cutter than the one we just used for the bottom of the cup I'm going to cut out another 
circle of clay. That sits, that sits right on the bottom of our saucer, as centrally as you can get it. And on something that's not going to stick like this, I will hold that upside down and just make sure it's as flat as I can get it. And then, as before, tenting on a tile in aluminium foil or using a bowl to go over the top, bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using and make as many of these as you have made for your cups. And all we need to do when they're baked is to take out the little forms and then our cups and saucers will be ready. I've used a simple cane for making the fairy cups today, but I've done quite a few petal canes on the YouTube tutorials. This one's the peacock petal cane. And if you use that, you make a little cup like that. Keeping it with the same little green saucer, I think gives you a nice effect. So that's another cane you could use. We've also got the speckled petal cane, in which I give you two varieties of canes to do. This was one, there was another. And doing that gives you a little cup that looks like this and again if you use the same little green saucer that gives you a lovely effect as well. So there are lots of different canes you can use to create your little fairy cups. Once your pieces have cooled, having finished baking, you should be able to just very simply remove the cups from the mould and with the saucers if you've used the moulding compound that just flicks out really quickly and easily and if you've used the paper again it should just flick out it can take slightly longer it sometimes does that and if you do have any real difficulty then you can just pop this in a bowl of water and as the water soaks into the card or the paper so it will flick out so what you then have are sweet little fairy cups that sit nicely in the groove that we've made for them in the saucer and of course you can fill these up with liquid if you actually want to use them as cups or if you want to have them on display with some form of looking like liquid in them then you can use the UV resin. And if you follow my tutorials then you'll know that the last one we did was making these fairy tables and chairs and then we've got our little cups that will sit nicely on the table so our little fairies can have a drink if they want to. And if you've been having fun making the cups and saucers and you have a fancy making some bowls and you're wondering if I'm going to do a bowl tutorial, then the answer is I've already done one. This is actually one that I did on my Etsy tutorials, one of the paid for tutorials, where you can make whole sets of bowls. And I'll show you how to do this particular pattern in colours. And I've done it there in the five different sizes. And once you know how to make the bowls, then you can start using any canes and really having fun and creating some wonderful pieces, whether for a fairy house or a doll's house. So there we are, sweet little fairy cups and saucers from polymer clay. These are the ones that I made, and you can make some too. I hope you enjoyed that. As always, thanks so much for watching, and a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Let's see if I've got any more fairy projects coming up in the next few weeks and months. I'll put my thinking cap on. In the meantime, have fun with this one and hopefully I'll see you next time. That's it for now. Bye.